So you want to start creating video content and you don't want to spend a lot of money, you need to watch this. Hey, this is Scott Wenkiewicz. I've got a very, very simple um, vlogging setup for at home and I've shared videos about this. I've talked about this many times, but I want to go piece by piece and show you exactly what I did because you can do this for very little expense, right? You don't have to buy a very expensive digital SLR or a full frame mirrorless or anything like that. You can use a simple webcam, a quality mic, and some good support and lighting, simple and effective, um, inexpensive lighting to get the job done. So let's talk about this and then we'll go piece by piece. I'm going to show you a bunch of different Amazon pages. I'll add it all up and put the price on it uh, in the end. I'm going to go with the, with the least expensive versions, but you could also uh, go more expensive if you want. And I'm going to show you all those as well. So let's go to the screen so you can take a look. Okay, so the first one is the Logitech uh, C920. Now this is a webcam that I have been using for a long time. Uh, and it is fantastic. It's a, it's a 1080p HD uh, webcam. And this thing, it does have stereo mic built in. I don't recommend using built in audio from webcams unless you really want to go cheap, but quality audio is important for video. So um, the C920, it is tripod mountable. The little uh, bracket that can sit on your, on your screen also has a tripod socket on the bottom and you can angle it in different things how you want. So you can put on a tripod, which is really nice. Now I have a standing desk and a lot of times I'm sort of leaning on my desk and if I shake, I don't want the, 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 the webcam to shake with it because shaky video would look horrible. So that is why I recommend using one that's tripod mountable. Now, if you want to uh, be, I'm going to use a quote from Logitech future proof, then I recommend checking out the Logitech Brio, which is a 4k uh, webcam. Now, if you're using a video recording software, it will record in 1080p if your computer only can handle 1080p or if you don't have a 1080p uh, 4K screen. And, but if you're using something like uh, Google Hangouts or YouTube Live or anything like that, it does not support the Brio currently. So you will have a very fuzzy screen. So uh, I actually have two webcams set up right now and tripod mounted. And the reason why I have both is because when I'm doing uh, my video podcast, I am doing it with the C920 still because I can't use the Brio in YouTube Live, which is kind of silly right now. Uh, you would think that Google would be ahead of the curve, but they're not. So anyway, if you want to be future-proof and get a 4K right now, then you can go with the Logitech Brio, but otherwise, you can save yourself some cash and go with the uh, Logitech C920, which you can get used now for around $60. That is pretty good, all right? So next on the list is this. This is called a Magic Arm. There are many companies out there that make these but this one from uh, Niwer is only $22 from Amazon in the United States. And it's, exact, it's the exact one that I'm using. Uh, now I have this mounted to a light stand. We're going to get to light stands in a little bit. But uh, I have this mounted to a light stand and my Brio is actually attached to it so that I can move it and position it however I need. So right now I have it actually situated just on top of and to the left a little of where the built-in FaceTime camera is on my MacBook Pro. And that way I'm still looking at the screen, but the camera is in the right position or as close to where it sh would naturally be in a, in a laptop um, otherwise. So these are very inexpensive and you can just clamp onto anything that's any sort of tripod or light stand and can be loosened and, and positioned in any way. So I recommend getting this one because it's just more affordable. Manfrotto also makes them, Luma Pro makes them. But the Niwer one, which is a knockoff, I will say it is a knockoff from, you know, wherever it's made. But it actually is built fairly well, you know, especially if you're not moving it around too much. So there you go. Next is a Blue Yeti mic. Now, there are a lot of microphones, USB microphones out there. Uh, even Blue makes a lot of USB microphones. But I recommend the Yeti specifically because the audio quality is fantastic. When I'm doing my uh, YouTube videos, recently I am keeping the microphone away and just turning the volume up a little bit on the input. That way I don't have the microphone in the frame all the time. When I'm doing the podcast, I usually have it closer to me so that I can turn the volume down and have even less background noise going on. And uh, it also makes your voice deeper when it's closer to you. So 
Uh, the Blue Yeti is actually does come with a stand, as you see. It is also microphone microphone stand mountable, so you can actually unscrew the microphone from the base and mount it. Now, the Blue Yeti, the Blue Yeti, you might think you talk into the top. You actually don't. You talk into the front of the microphone, unless you have it on 360, which means uh, it's not really. It's omnidirectional, um, but that basically means it's recording in on all the sides. But if you're using it as cardioid, which is the preferred for just voice, for a single person talking, then I recommend talking into the front. So when I say front, I'm saying here. You're talking right into that part because that is where you're intended to talk when it's set to cardioid. Now, let's move into the next one. The next is this. Now, there are a lot of these swivel boom arms that clamp onto desks or can be screwed into desks. Uh, I've tried a cheap one. Uh, I even tried, I think it's down here a little bit. Nope, it's not. I even tried what is called, like uh, I think even uh, Neewer makes it, but it was too flimsy. It, it actually also was squeaky, and WD-40 did not help. So I recommend the Rode PSA-1. Now, it is more expensive than the like $12 one from other companies, but this thing is rock solid. It is super strong. It is clamped on, onto my desk. I can shake my desk, right? I'm going to shake my desk and you don't hear anything. So um, I do have that. Now, I do recommend, if you can afford it, to pick up something like this. This is actually called a shock mount, and this one's specifically made for the Yeti. Um, you don't need the shock mount because the, the Rode PSA-1 does a good job of dampening this any shakes, but if you want absolute best audio quality, then a shock mount is a good thing. Sort of just like how a fuzzy cat or one of these pop filters or anything like that are also good for when you're doing uh, any audio recording that is professional, professionally done. So, but this is a, this is essential. Having a good boom arm so you can um, you know clamp it to your desk and move it wherever you need is a very really really essential thing. All right. Next is a good light stand. You can get this one for twenty dollars from Cowboy Studio. I. Personally, prefer things that are sturdier because you never know if something's going to shake and or too much weight. Or I actually have a lot of things attached to my light stand, so I actually have a C stand. That's a called a it's a uh, short for a cinema stand, and I have the one from Lumo Pro, and I use that because it is rock solid. I can add a lot of things to it, and I can even like hold myself. I can stand on it. It is not going anywhere, and it also goes very high if I really needed to. Uh, in my office, I don't need it to go too high because it's serving this one purpose. I do have other light stands I could switch to that are lower or not as sturdy that I, that'll free up the the C stand for other things. But it's doing the job and it's working really well. So right now I have the uh, Brio attached to it. I also have the C920 attached to it, and I have uh, my ring light, which you'll see in a little bit, attached to it. And then I also have cables wrapped and tied to it for um, my standing desk for when I raise and lower it, things don't get all twisted. So C-Stand is really, really worth it if you can afford it. Otherwise, go for just a light stand. Now, the light stand is going to be good because you're going to be able to attach a light and your webcam using the um, magic arm right here. So you'll be able to clamp this to your light stand. All right. So here's an inexpensive one from Cowboy Studio. Here is one from Manfrotto. It's a little bit more expensive. It's also more compact. So this is really meant for travel. So if you if you don't need to travel, go for the uh, the the least the less expensive one, and just you know it's just let, let it stay stationary. And then here's one from Luma Pro. Again, this is a little bit heavier duty one, uh, heavier duty than the Cowboy Studio, but it's also very similar. And they and Luma Pro also makes a C stand, like I said before, that is even more heavy duty. I think it's around hundred dollars. Last and definitely not least is the light. Now. Neewer makes a variety of ring lights. Now these are meant to go on top of a light stand. So I have one right now in front of me that uh, my C920 is actually mounted. You can mount a uh, camera or a um, or anything like that right here. So I actually have a little adapter that is a tiny tripod adapter and then my um, C920 is right in the middle right there. Um, and that is only used for when I'm doing the podcasting. Uh, like I said, <laughs> for for this video, I'm using the Brio. Now, the, ring, the advantage of the ring light is that you're getting this nice, gorgeous light around your face, and it's sort of concentrated to your face and not anywhere else, 
and it is also an LED, which is really great. So the lights will last a long time. They use very little electricity. They also come with these different filters if you want to like warm it up or diffuse it more. I have the diffusion on mine just to soften the light a little bit. It's also dimmable, which is great. And I think there's even a battery backup, which is great. Um, there's multiple versions of this. There's even a fluorescent version if you want to do that, but I don't recommend going fluorescent because your light will start flickering and changing greens and won't be flattering at all. So go with an LED if you can. It's consistent light. Um, and, uh, and yeah, the downside to, to, to a ring light is that as, uh, as you can see right now, you're probably seeing circles in my glasses. So if you wear glasses, it's kind of hard to position a ring light, especially for this purpose, um, for, for somebody with glasses. If I take off my glasses, it just looks really good in my eyes. You don't see any reflections in my lenses. So that's what I recommend. I'm going to add all this up. I'm going to go with the least expensive versions of everything, add it all up. And, and in the title of this post, it'll actually say how to create a simple vlogging setup for under X amount of dollars. Um, and, uh, and I hope that uh, you appreciate the, every bit of gear that I'm using and you think about it for your own setup because you don't need anything fancy, especially for doing videos like what I'm doing. If you're doing videos that are outside or, or anywhere that are not just stationary, that's a little bit trickier. And I haven't gotten to that point where I figured out my ideal solution. But again, I like being practical and I like being um, uh, uh, easy on the, on, on the pocket when it comes to doing this kind of stuff. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. And yeah, you're awesome. Subscribe.